All right, welcome to the next episode in our image cropper series. I'm excited for this one because we're finally going to add framer motion to add some animation to our cropper. So let's dive right in. Now, I've already added framer motion to our project. So our first step is to come down here to our image component and replace this with a motion.image, which is an auto import from framer motion. And the next step is to use the animate prop and move our three crop values to animate. And just like that, when we save, you can see our image cropper is already animating. So this is pretty amazing. Uh, it's animating every value that we change, whether we pan or zoom, or even when our little adjustment function runs when the gesture has stopped. Now, in our case, I actually don't want to animate the panning and the zooming since that makes the cropper feel a little less natural. So what I'm going to do is actually come up here to where we're setting up our react state for the crop. And instead, we're going to create these three new motion values using uh, this other use motion value import from Framer Motion. So I'm going to comment out the react state and everywhere that we are referencing crop or set crop, we'll just replace them with calls to set and get on our motion values. So this set crop will become x.set and y.set. This crop right here in our memo will become this object and we'll replace this call with calls to set. The initial drag will become this. Our new crop will become this. And our last call to set crop will replace with this. Now down here, uh, we're actually not going to use the animate prop anymore. So we'll put these back into style. And Framer Motion even has some shorthands here to help us out. So we can replace left with x, top with y, and we can even replace this with just scale equal to our new motion value. Now let's come back up and uncomment our React state. Hit save and give this a shot. And now we can see we're basically right back to where we started. None of our crop changes are actually animating anymore. But check this out. I can come to our maybe adjust image function. And instead of just synchronously calling set on these motion values, I can use the animate function to say, let's go ahead and animate these new values. And now we'll see that when I drag the image outside of the bounds and we animate it back into the container, we're getting that nice animation. But as I pan and zoom, we're getting that nice responsive feel without any animation at all. Now, you might have noticed when I drag this around, if I try to grab it while the animation is still running, we kind of have this weird sticky behavior. And that's because Framer Motion is trying to finish animating these changes while we're starting a new gesture. So we can fix this using the animation controls that are returned from these function calls. So I'm going to come up here to where we're setting everything up, create a new animations array. And down here, we will throw these two animate calls into our animations array. We'll just set it like this. And then up here, right at the beginning of our drag and our pinch gesture handlers, we'll just for each over that array and call stop on any animations that are in there. So now you can see I can grab this thing whenever, no matter uh, if the animation is still running, it's basically made it cancelable. But again, uh, as we drag it, it's still responsive. As we zoom in and out, it's still responsive. So this is uh, this is really cool. And it's, it's always important to make sure your animations are cancelable. Okay, so our cropper is looking pretty good. It's feeling pretty good. But you might have noticed that our crop values are no longer updating here in our little info box. And that's because we've basically moved all the state into Framer Motion. So it's not causing React to re-render anything. And that state uh, isn't even inside of React anymore. React isn't aware of those changes. And so uh, to fix this, what we're going to do is actually just hoist this state right outside of our image cropper. And let's put this into our home component. Then what we'll do is pass in this crop value as a new prop to our image cropper, just like that. And then finally, we'll define a second new prop called on crop change. And we'll just pass in our setter as that prop. So now we can come here and use on crop change to actually communicate up to our parent that the state has changed. And we can do that anywhere we want. We're going to come to the end of our adjustment function and just call it right here on crop change. And we'll pass in our new crop. Finally, let's go ahead and grab this uh, info right here 
and just throw it into the parent component right below our image cropper. And now when we drag our image, you can see it's actually receiving the updated values of crop. So I can zoom in and you'll see it gets the scale, the Y value and everything. But our image cropper and frame motion are actually responsible for the animations and making sure that this is fast. So this is a nice little boundary we've created, but we can see our parent still gets those state updates and those are just in good old React state and they can be used in the rest of our application just like our developers would expect. Now, one final thing you might have noticed uh, as I was using this is we kind of have that sticky behavior back. So if I drag this and it's moving and I try to drag it again, it seems like it's not interruptible anymore like it was when we called stop here. And that's because since we're calling on crop change, which is calling this setter, this component is re-rendering, which is causing our image cropper to re-render. So we're actually losing reference to this animations array and those old animations are never actually getting canceled. So what do you do when you need to share state across re-renders in React? Well, you just quit your job and become a tulip farmer. Or you go with the second option, which is to use a ref. So uh, let's make this animations array here a ref. We'll call use ref and seed it with this array value. Right here, when we iterate over these, we will call animations.current. And when we set it down here, we will call animations.current as well. So if we save this with any luck, we're still getting the state updates to the parent, but I can move this around and we have that nice responsive behavior again. The animation is completely cancelable and uh, you can see it's very responsive. So uh, this is pretty awesome. Hopefully, if you've never used Frame or Motion before, that gets you excited about it. I think it's an awesome library and uh, I just love how easy it interacts with React Use Gesture. You know, we, we did all this math and we did all this calculation leading up to this without any knowledge of, of frame or motion at all. So I think that's a testament to how good the boundaries are between these two libraries that we can just swap in frame or motion for our rendering. You know, it's doing things like 3D translates and making sure that we're using request animation frame to keep all of this performant without React even knowing it's being re-rendered. But we still have this nice boundary with this nice little API that we've written so that uh, the rest of our application can use those crop values to actually chop up the image, save a crop version or whatever you need to do. So that's it for this one. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.